Well, uh, thank you for the opportunity to present here this afternoon. Um, the title of my presentation is Advancing the Phoenix Go Project to uh, Commercial Production. Um, a little bit on uh, the Rubicon. Uh, we have a strong uh, management team with a proven track record of uh, working in the gold mining industry in a production scenario. Uh, my claim to fame uh, in my last position was turning around uh, Curtin Lake Gold, uh, which many of you will know. Rubicon controls 28,000 hectares of land in the Red Lake, uh, in northern Ontario, which is one of the most prestigious gold mining camps in Canada. We have a new infrastructure in place, including a working 1,250-tonne uh, per day mill, which is fully permitted. We've put out two 43-101s on this project, the latest one over 1 million ounces of 6.5 grams in the ground, and we backed that up, putting uh, 40,000 tonnes through our mill last year with a positive reconciliation. There's a PEA which is about to come out in uh, August of this year, and then we'll then embark on the feasibility study, which will be out in the first half of uh, 2020. Uh, we've uh, got also 28,000 hectares of land in uh, Red Lake, uh, so huge opportunity for organic growth uh, once we put the focus uh, in on that uh, area of the project. I'm going to skip past that. A little bit about the uh, share capital structure. Uh, we currently have uh, $8 million uh, Canadian in the bank. Uh, currently, 70 million shares issued, and on a fully dilutive basis, uh, 75 uh, uh, million. Here you can see a photograph of the, uh, the site, and uh, as I said earlier, uh, as well as the mill, we also have a permitted tailings pond, 720 meter deep uh, full production shaft, uh, access to fresh water, power into the site. And also you'll see on that slide, we have $700 million in tax loss pools, effectively meaning that uh, if we go into commercial production, uh, we'll never pay any tax on any profits that we generate. There's also, also $308 million of uh, tax pools which can be used outside of the Phoenix project. So as the company evolves and uh, perhaps we start looking at mergers or acquisitions, those tax loss pools could be applied against other corporations, other assets or other entities to reduce their tax burden or improve their after-tax uh, NPV. Here you can see the two resource models that we've put out, 43101 compliant resources over the last couple of years. The latest one went out in April of this year. So we now have 589,000 ounces of measured and indicated resources at five, uh, sorry, 6.3 grams in the ground and 540,000 ounces of inferred resources at 6.5 uh, grams per tonne. And these will be included, obviously, in the uh, PEA, uh, which is due to come out in August of this year. Uh, our focus for this year on the drilling is another 20,000 metres of orientated drilling. Uh, we intend to uh, move more inferred material up into the M&I. We believe in order to go into a feasibility study, we'll require in excess of 650,000 ounces of measured and indicated resources. I'm sure, as you're well aware, that uh, only M&I can convert over to proven and probable reserves in a feasibility study. But at those type of thresholds, we should see at least 500,000 ounces of uh, 2P, which would give us an initial mine life of five to six years at 80 to 100,000 ounces of annual production at the back end of 2021. And here you can see on this diagram where we're drilling. The small rectangle box is the infill drilling. There'll be approximately 15,000 meters drilled there this year. And the larger box is more uh, e exploratory drilling where the deposit has not been cut off at depth. So there'll be 5,000 meters uh, uh, sunk into the ground there. And indeed, two weeks ago, we actually put out our first drill holes through six or seven uh, areas of mineralization with uh, good uh, mining widths. Given Rubicon, uh, those of you that have followed the company in the past, we always put this slide in to show what's the downside with respect to this project. With uh, a million ounces in the ground of resource, if you looked at $30 Canadian an ounce, that would be $30 million in value. The company has $300 million in hard, tangible assets today. The mill was a $150 million investment itself. At 10 cents on the dollar under a fire sale, those would be worth $30 million. Our land package in Red Lake uh, is very strategic, particularly given Newmont now acquiring GoCorp. So uh, we believe the land is easily worth $30 million. 
And of course, those tax loss pools provided Rubicon as a corporate entity survives and I'm perhaps a reverse takeover do have a, a lot of uh, value for potentially someone else. And if we applied $20 million to that and we duck, deduct off our uh, $15 million Canadian long-term debt, it gives us a breakup or salvage value of the company today of approximately $95 million Canadian dollars. Yet the company's market cap is only $65 million Canadian. So we believe that uh, we are extremely undervalued. And of course, if we go through to commercial production, a producing asset in Red Lake with the land package and expiration potential we have would be worth significantly more than where we are uh, valued today. Here are some of the timelines. So we have 10,000 meters actually drilled as of the end of May. By September, that number will have grown to 15,000 meters. The PEA comes out in August of this year. We then move into a feasibility study starting in September of this year, and that would be out in the second quarter of next year. We've already brought groups into our data room who are capable of financing this project, and the goal would be that uh, when the feasibility comes out uh, in the second quarter of 2020, the project is already financed and we green light it through to commercial production. The internal timelines to commercial production are showing a 15-month ramp-up period uh, before we could declare commercial production. Here is the land package. So what you see in the musty color, uh, sort of yellow-orange color, is uh, our land. And you can see there in the wine, sort of purple color, is uh, Newmont Gold Corp's position. 80% of our claims butt up against one another. So obviously they're extremely strategic. And here, what we've done here is we've drawn a 10 kilometer radius out from the Phoenix Gold project itself. And you'll notice how that it encapsulates the current producing mines and the current uh, milling facilities that Newmont Gold Corp has. In those blue uh, rectangles, you'll see uh, Newmont Gold Corp's other properties where they do have 43101 compliant resources. And they're right next door to properties that we have. Some of them even have uh, drill holes and mineralization on them. We think over time there's a high likelihood that Newmont will actually divest the Red Lake assets, and that's going to create a consolidation opportunity. If a new uh, uh, person or group were to come into town, we believe obviously Red Lake would be a core asset for them, and ultimately at the end of the day they'd look to consolidate the camp. So the key stories or key uh, uh, points to take away from this story are obviously we have significant infrastructure. Essentially the mine is built, ready to go. We believe we've significantly de-risked the resource model, the geological structural model, particularly through our test trial mining and milling last year, where we ended up getting 14% more gold out than what the model predicted. The land package in Red Lake, 28,000 hectares, is extremely strategic and also creates huge opportunities for Rubicon down the line once we start exploring there. The project economics, uh, uh, under my tenure the first time, will be out in August of this year, and we expect those to be extremely robust and show some significant upside from where we're currently valued. And if we green light it through to commercial production, as I said earlier, a relatively short period of time, 15 months and the back end 2021 and this mine is in commercial production in Red Lake, Northern Ontario, one of the safest mining jurisdictions in the world and one of the most prestigious gold mining camps. Thank you. Great, thank you. Thank you.